All right, you guys keep hearing me talk about uh, the central limit theorem and how important it is. So let's begin uh, the rest of this week's lecture uh, talking about what is the central limit theorem. So there's two components to it. All right, so the first component says that if samples of size n greater than 30 are drawn from any population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the sampling distribution of sample means approximates a normal distribution. The greater the sample size, the better the approximation. Okay, so again, we have uh, one condition, and that just says that we, we need to have sample sizes greater than or equal to 30. All right, if we do that, then we can use the central limit theorem, which tells us that our sampling distribution of sample means is approximately normal. All right, the other uh, possibility says that if the population itself is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of sample means is normally distributed for any sample size n. All right, so we either have to have sample sizes larger than 30 or we need to have a population that is normally distributed. In either case, the sampling distribution of sample means has a mean equal to the population mean. All right, so we saw that in the last lecture. The sampling distribution of sample means has a variance equal to 1 over n times the variance of the population and a standard deviation equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so again, if we want the variance, we'll take the population variance and divide it by our sample sizes, okay, or our n. Uh, if we want the standard deviation or standard error of the mean, we're going to take our standard deviation of the population, sigma, and divide that by the square root of n. All right, so here's what the first condition is saying. We can have any old population. So we see here... All right, so we see here that this is clearly not symmetric. It's clearly not a normal distribution or bell-shaped or anything, okay? But if we take sample mean, if we take samples uh, greater than or equal to n, then the distribution of sample means will be approximately normal, all right? Similarly, if we start with a normal population distribution, then the distribution of sample means is going to be approximately normal for any size n. So these are just pictures giving you an idea of what I'm saying uh, in that first slide. Alright, so the rest of the way let's just go through some examples. Cellular phone bills for residents of a city have a mean of $63 and a standard deviation of $11. Random samples of 100 cellular phone bills are drawn from this population and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and standard error of the mean of the sampling distribution. Then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of sample means. All right, what are we going to do? Well, we know that the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean. Okay, so we know once we are given the population mean, we know the mean of the sampling distribution. Okay. The standard error of the mean is going to be equal to the population standard deviation, which they give us as 11, divided by the square root of n. All right, so going back here, we have, here's our sigma, here's our n. All right, so we're going to take our sigma 11 divided by the square root of 100, and we get 1.1. All right, since the sample size is greater than 30, we obviously it was 100, the sampling distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution with our mean at 63 and our standard deviation of $1.10. Okay? All right, suppose the training heart rates of all 20-year-old athletes are normally distributed with a mean of 135 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 18 beats per minute. Random samples of size 4 are drawn from this population, and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and standard error of the mean of the sampling distribution. Then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of sample means. Whew, sounds like a lot of words, but it's really not too bad, guys. All right, once again, what are our numbers? All right, we have, this is our mean. All right, here's our mu, 
our population mean, all right, here's our sigma, all right, our standard deviation of the population, all right, and then we're taking samples of size 4, so n equals 4, all right, so we have everything we need to calculate the mean and standard error of the mean, all right, our mean is identical. All right, the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean, so that's 135. The standard error of the mean is going to be our standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So we have 18 divided by the square root of 4, which is 9. All right, since the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution of the sample means is also normally distributed. So here we have our mean at 135, and we're using our standard error of the mean of 9. All right, so again, here in, in examples, you've seen our two cases. We either have to have uh, samples of size larger than 30. So in that first example, we had samples of size 100, or we have to have a population that is normally distributed, as we've seen here with the 20-year-old heart, heart rates. All right. We can transform, all right, uh, x bar to a z-score. So we can transform sample means to a z-score. How are we going to do that? Uh, well, this z-score formula should look very familiar. We're just going to take our sample mean minus our populate minus the mean of the sampling distribution or our population. Um, how do I want to say this? population mean uh, divided by our standard error. Okay, so again, this is a, a slight variation of the z-score because we're de dealing with sampling distribution of the sampling mean. Okay, the graph shows the length of time people spend driving each day. You randomly select 50 drivers ages 15 to 19. What's the probability that the mean time they spend driving each day is between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes. Assume that the standard deviation is 1.5 minutes. All right, what are we going to do? Okay, well, from the central limit theorem, since the sample size is greater than 30, the sampling distribution of sample means is approximately normal. We know the mean 25, and we know uh, the standard error. We can calculate that. So. I'm going to actually go ahead and do this, um, and I'm going to call this mu x bar, all right, and that's just going to be our population mean of 25, and our standard error, all right, this is going to be equal to our standard deviation that they give us divided by the square root of our sample size, 50, all right, so I calculate uh, my standard error. All right, now what I want, all right, let's go back here. What I want is the probability that the mean time they spend driving is between, so I want between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes. Okay, this is what I want. All right, how can I use Excel to give me a probability? Well, Hopefully, you guys remember, this is when we do, we're going to have norm.dist of 25.5, comma, 25, comma, 0 0.2121. I'm going to truncate it there. All right, so this is where we get the area to the left of 25.5 minus the area to the left of our smaller number. 24.7. All right, put in my mean, put in my standard error. Oh, and I have to say true. Notice back here I did not say true. Okay. So this is what I'm getting ready to type in. So I say equals norm.dist, all right, of 25.5 comma, my mean, comma, my standard error, comma, true, minus norm.dist of 24.7, the smaller number, comma, my mean, 
comma my standard error, comma true. All right, and I'm getting, I'm going to percent that, and I'm getting roughly 91% um, of the 15 to 19 year olds drive between, let's see here, 25.5 uh, and 24.7 minutes. Okay, so again, I, I'm always going to give you guys the pictures here in the lecture, all right? The normal distribution and then converting it to the standard normal. Again, this is the um, more the old-fashioned way when we had to do everything by hand because we had tables. Uh, you don't need the tables at all. All you need is an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm just using the norm.dist function straight away. Okay, now uh, let's look at the difference between finding probabilities for x and finding probabilities for a sample mean. An education finance corporation claims that the average credit card debts carried by undergraduates are normally distributed, with a mean of $3,173 and a standard deviation of $1,120. What is the probability that a randomly selected undergraduate who's a credit card holder has a credit card balance less than 2700 All right, so here we have one person less than 2700 okay? So what's the probability randomly select one undergraduate, all right? Randomly select one undergraduate. This is when we do equals norm dot dist, okay, and what are our inputs going to be? They're going to be x, uh, mu, standard deviation, and true, okay, and so I'm going to, oops, did not mean to do equals, that's my bad, all right, so let's type that in, equals norm dot dist, all right, of, we want everything less than 2700, our mean is 3173, our standard deviation is 1120, and we type true, okay, and we're getting roughly 34%. Okay, so there's a 34% chance a randomly selected undergraduate has a credit card balance less than 2700. Okay, so again, here's our picture. We just want the area to the left of 2700. Okay. Now we randomly select 25 undergraduates, all right? So now we have 25 people, and we want less than, and we want to know what's the probability their mean credit card balance is less than 2,700. So now rather than just selecting one person who happens to have a balance less than 2,700, now we're hoping to grab 25 people who collectively have an average less than 2,700, all right? So, since the population is assumed normal, that's in the problem, all right, we know we have our n is 25, okay, our um, mu x bar, is. we know that's equal to mu, all right, so that's going to be uh, 3173, all right, and our standard error is going to be equal to our standard deviation, 1120, divided by a, the square root of n, okay? All right, so I'll tell you guys here that is equal to um, sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, and so now, now that I have my standard error, my mu x bar, and my n, all right, I can calculate um, the, the probability. So now we're going to have norm.dist of um, x bar, the x bar we're interested in, all right, we're going to have mu x bar, we are going to have standard error, and we're going to have true. So our inputs change a little bit because now we're thinking about the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So we have equals norm.dist, all right? 
we are still concerned with less than 2,700. All right, we know that the sampling mean is the same as the population mean. So, and I'm just gonna use a cell reference here. So 3,173, all right. We're gonna use our standard error that we calculated, the 224, and we type true. Okay, and we get a probability around 2%, okay. So, how can we interpret this? There's about a 34% chance that an undergraduate will have a balance less than 2,700. Right? We saw that right here. About a 34% chance. Right? There is only about a 2% chance, as we just saw, that the mean of a sample of 25 will have a balance less than 2,700. All right? This is unusual. Why is it unusual? It's unusual because it's less than 5%. Right? That is typically our cutoff for unusual, less than 5%. It is possible that the sample is either unusual or it's possible that the corporations claim that the mean is 3,173 is incorrect. Okay, so if this actually happens, if we actually get, if we randomly select 25 people and they have a mean less than 2,700, all right, then because there's only a 2% chance of that occurring, it is either unusual or again, the corporation could be making a bogus claim 